ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವದೇ ಶಿವಾನಂದಾಯ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲವರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸಹಾಜನಂದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಯು ಟು ಯರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಡಾಲಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ this will be facilitated by myself and our youth the theme is turning within during challenging times now we all are aware that 2020 has had an unprecedented effect on our everyday life thousands of people have lost their jobs some have lost their loved ones many are going through depression some are fearing death the thought of being infected by the invisible corona virus has become debilitating at the same time the use of technology has become useful and convenient through it life continues with some amount of normality do you think that this is the new normal could this be the future can we develop the ultimate blind faith and self surrender as advocated by our master while the world around us is in a turmoil can we conquer our fears and depression through the study of the teachings of the srimad bhagavad gita and our master's books could the use of science and technology lead us to the ultimate truth on the flip side are there any positives that has emerged due to the lockdown in previous presentations we covered the pandemic from a medical and spiritual perspective where attention was drawn to the role of meditation pranayama yoga asanas and spiritual sadhana as a necessary part of our daily routine perhaps the time is now to expand on the teachings of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita and our master's writings to address the issues of fear, depression and the use of technology. The detailed instructions provided by Sri Krishna to Arjuna on the battlefield of the Kurukshetra war is still very valid and applicable. The raging war is very much alive within and around us today our master advised us to read a discourse of the bhagavad gita daily so that its great lessons can assist us with coping with these challenges our youth ambrosia padmani rivash and adrian will elaborate on this and provide us with some insight on how we can dispel our doubts and overcome our challenges. Okay everyone, I need to make a confession. I would be lying if I said that I am not a victim of fear. Tell us Ambrosia, what is it that you fear? Frankly, I fear that I myself or members of my family may fall victim to this virus. and i also dread the thought of me or any of my family members dying from it it is this fear that drives me to the point of paranoia i resent leaving the house for essentials i have somewhat developed an uneasiness about everyone and everything that enters the house i am not proud to say that this attitude drives my family batty at times Life is always changing, growing, declining, moving and shifting. But then, there are unexpected moments that accelerate and magnify change. A cancer diagnosis, retrenchment, the death of a loved one, a global pandemic like the invisible coronavirus. From experience, we have come to realize that there is only one thing that is constant. and that is change i'm sure we all identify to some extent let's see how we can surmount this by practical application of our divine masters and pujya swamiji's teachings 
Exactly. Let's go about this logically. So the fear we have is in relation to us or our family contracting this virus, right? Let me just come right out and say this. There's absolutely no need for fear or paranoia. Let me quote Pooja Swamiji's words from Path of Divine Grace, Volume 3. Quote, So we should turn to Gurudev within and take all precautions, but do not have any fear because what is going to happen will happen and what is not going to happen will not happen. Unquote. Oh gosh, Padmini, if that was supposed to provide some relief, it is not working. Relax, Ambrosia. There is still no cause for fear. The Bhagavad Gita was gifted to mankind just when Arjuna had sunk into the depths of despair and fear. Remember, as long as we remain steeped in our ego consciousness, we are sure to separate ourselves from God and the oneness of God. This separation is the counter to surrender and results in fear. One of the axioms of occult science is that whatever we fear the most will feel itself magnetically attached to you. It is also important to know that fear is highly contagious. Therefore, it is in one's own interest for one to try by all means to eliminate fear. We need to be extremely vigilant when reading newspapers or following social media full with fearful events or listening to people about their stories of being filled with fear and being exposed to constant worst-case scenarios. Separation causes fear, but it is illusory, brought on by false thinking. In the message of the Gita, in the tenth discourse, it says, quote, The true devotee of the Lord is wholly absorbed in Him. He has surrendered to Him, and through single-minded devotion, He has granted the power of discrimination that leads Him from the unreal to the real. Lord Krishna emphatically declares that ignorance is destroyed and knowledge is gained through divine grace alone. End quote. Pandemic or no pandemic, suffering is a constant theme in life. One should try to maintain a calm disposition during tribulations through remembrance of God. Even Arjuna was despondent at the beginning of the war, but this was overcome by attaining discrimination through the Lord's grace. The Gita is the essence of the Vedas, which is the science of life. It will be challenging to distill it any further as most of, if not all messages, have some relevance in any given situation. Really, Adrian? Look, what I feel is certainly genuine, and I don't know if you all can convince me otherwise. Allow me to quote a story that Pujya Swamiji recounts in Path of Divine Grace, Volume 3. It's a prop that I myself used to derive courage from. Quote, when Sadhu Vaswani was in Sindh, the Muslims were killing the Hindus. He would take an evening walk. The devotees said, Don't take your walk because they will harm you. He said, I will only pass away the moment God wants me to pass away, and not any earlier and not any later. Unquote. Swamiji continues, Quote, One thing is certain, you can't bring your death forward and you can't postpone it. As the scriptures say, Brahma has written it on your forehead. Unquote. Also, I recall that Pujya Swamiji had a fear of darkness. To overcome this fear, he spent a night on a roadside in Winin, which is near Escort. So, you see, Hembrosia, even if we worry painstakingly to take every precaution, if our time has come, we may even slip on a banana peel and meet our end. Okay, so tell me then, what's the point of taking any precautions to protect myself and family against this virus, when despite my efforts, we will succumb to it if we are destined to? Regardless of what is destined for us, Pujya Swamiji always advised us to use our common sense and take necessary precautions. Come on, Ambrosia. If you place your hand in fire, surely you will get burnt? Fair enough. 
But whichever way I perceive this, I cannot see how getting infected can ever be for the best. It is this that adds to my fear. That's where faith and self-surrender come in. During this pandemic, we are not merely dealing with the matters of physical health, but an entire complex socio-political whirlwind that is fueled by our modern access to social media and a 24-hour news cycle. In that environment, it is clear that fear itself is our greatest enemy and an obstacle on the path of faith and self-surrender. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, I quote, Fear and fearlessness arise from me alone. Unquote. So it is possible to transform fear into fearlessness. Wait, Rivash, are you suggesting that Hembrosia use faith and self-surrender to conquer her fear? How is that supposed to work? It's simple. There's a reason that Puja Swamiji made the following words part of our invocation. Words that we repeat regularly in order to reinforce its import. So tell me, Hamrosia, when you recite the words, I quote, Gurudev, you can decide my life or my death, my happiness or my sorrow, my pleasure or my pain. Whatever you do with me, whatever comes to me from you, will lead me to your lotus feet. Unquote. Do you really mean it? Of course, I say those words sincerely. Our master explained it so clearly in a poem that I remember. I quote, I am pain, thy teacher, the best thing in this world. I am an eye-opener, soul awakener. I am an inspirer and thriller. I come to remind you of God. Unquote. So in other words, Rivash, perhaps we can view this pandemic as a way to take us closer to God. Absolutely, Hamrosia. When you have surrendered everything to him, in that prayer to Gurudev and entrusted him to decide everything for us, trusting that he knows what's best for us, what is there to fear? For me, it is this method of employing faith and self-surrender to combat fear and worry that really works. As much as we are all familiar with the law of karma, it can be especially trying to choose the path of faith and self-surrender without wondering why the crisis is happening in the first place. Here is another quote from Path of Divine Grace, which works for me. Pujya Swamiji said, I quote, If God wants to do something, you cannot cheat and deceive him. He will do what he wants with you. When the right time comes, it is going to happen. So why worry about it? Why panic? Unquote. But tell me, how does one explain to someone who is infected that what has happened to them is for the best? No doubt a tricky one, Hembrosia. But what comes to mind is Sharon Brown's experience. Sharon Brown was diagnosed with cancer and she related how this difficulty actually led her to discovering the benefits of Japa. She mentions very profoundly these words that Pujya Swamiji chose to repeat to us. She said, quote, I had actually begun to feel grateful for having cancer because it was cancer that allowed me to hear the mantra. The fact is that it seemed like cancer was a small enough price to pay for experiencing something that was greater than I could ever imagine." Unquote. So there you have it, Ambrosia. If you brace yourself psychologically that in the event that you should happen to get infected by this virus, if you allow that experience to lead you closer to God, which is the aim of this birth, would you not consider it your good fortune rather than your misfortune? It makes sense. But say hypothetically, I or someone close to me was to die from it, that would be just too awful. 
no one knows what awaits one on the other side. Ambrosia, we have no reason to fear death. My eyes have just fallen on these words of Pujya Swamiji's from Path of Divine Grace, Volume 3. Listen to his comforting words. Open quote. When you pass away, especially devotees of Gurudev, you will have absolutely no trouble at all. Your transition will be smooth because the Guru appears before you and he makes the transition smooth. That is, of course, provided you don't stray away from Gurudev and do evil deeds. So all of Gurudev's disciples have absolutely nothing to fear about death. Many people who recover from the state of death prefer death to life. They don't like to come back to the body because death is a very pleasant state. Close quote. Well, I must admit, that is very comforting and reassuring. Ultimately, the coronavirus is transforming human culture. And when human culture shifts, things change significantly. It is imperative that although things are changing around us, we cultivate a calm and serene space within us. The single most effective way to do so is by prayer. Our Master has explained the benefits of prayer beautifully in the following writings. I quote, Take refuge in Lord, in His name and grace. All fears will vanish completely. He will bestow strength, fortitude, courage, presence of mind, etc. in you. Prayer is communion with God. Prayer is the miracle by which God's power flows into human veins. Therefore, kneel down and pray." Unquote. In fact, Swamiji continues to say, quote, So Gurudev's disciples have absolutely nothing to fear. As long as you remember him, you will have no fear at all. You won't even worry who is around you at the time because he will come and make the transition very smooth." Unquote. Thanks so much. I am glad I got that out of the way. I can now say with firm conviction that I am no longer afraid. Despite the precautions I take, if I do happen to succumb to this virus, I will, like Sharon Brown did, use it as an opportunity to take me closer to God. Regardless of whether I recover or not, I am now at peace, since even if I am to die from it, I am no longer fearful after hearing Swamiji's words of assurance. I will always use this positive affirmation which was given by Sri Gurudev to Abdul Kalam, who was a famous scientist and former president of India. Abdul Kalam was in a state of despair as he had been rejected as an airline pilot. Sri Gurudev inquired as to why he was so dejected and said to him, I quote, Defeat the defeatist tendency. You are destined for greater things. We are all destined for greater things. Unquote. Abdul Kalam continued to use these profound words from our master whenever he was in trouble. I couldn't have put it better, Ambrosia. Let us conclude this aspect of our discussion with the solace providing and fortifying words of Pujya Swamiji. I quote, Let cancer come, let diabetes come, or whatever it is, it is only going to harm the body. But if you turn your soul towards God, marvelous things can happen in your life. In a few weeks, in a few months, we can really become saints. So that is what God's grace is. The ways of God are mysterious, but well-intentioned always. Humanity is His offspring. He is guiding it towards Him in His own inscrutable ways." Unquote. I totally agree with you, Rivash. 
we learn from the Bhagavad Gita that not even a blade of grass moves without Sri Krishna's will. So let us surrender completely to him. I know it is easier said than done. Now let us take a look at technology and its rapid evolution. There is an enormous amount of information out there. Do you think this can lead us to the ultimate truth? The COVID pandemic has created a collective trauma for the entire world. It has created various types of psychological stresses and fears. We rely on media to evaluate risk and provide input. While technology clearly has applications that can help important aspects of our social, educational and occupational lives to continue during the COVID-19 outbreak, we must cautiously weigh its use against the potential for harm. What are the drawbacks of this increased utilization of technology? These days, you can receive any information via social media and the use of technology. I feel that this is a great invention. Sure, it is a great invention. But we must not discount the use of technology and its detrimental effects. You know that online platforms are by design addictive. They encourage endless scrolling and do not have a clear stop point. Which is why it is so common for people to spend many hours online or engaged with social media. The same exists with online or YouTube news videos. One can follow links indefinitely without a clear demarcated end. This may be particularly problematic as people seek out information to navigate the changing COVID-19 landscape. In contrast, when reading a traditional newspaper, one will, at some point, finish reading the paper, suggesting it is time to move on to a different activity. In addition to the social and occupational impairment that can result from any behavioral addiction, some research suggests that time spent on social media may be associated with increased anxiety, depression, and other mental health ailments. I do understand your view, but I feel that technology is very powerful as we can obtain literally any information through it. That is true, Rivash. However, modern science can continue to create new inventions, but it can never lead to the final truth as spoken about in the Bhagavad Gita. Science is static, but the truth, as stated by Lord Krishna, is attained through intuition. This is the kingly secret that the Lord talks about. I recall reading it in the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. It goes a little something like this. I quote, This is the kingly secret, the supreme purifier, realizable by direct intuitional knowledge, according to righteousness, very easy to perform and imperishable. Unquote. So, if we look for a solution in our scriptures, what do you think will be the answer, Adrian? Well, in the 16th discourse, Lord Krishna has given us the divine qualities that we have to develop in order to attain Him and enjoy eternal bliss and peace. We also have to rid ourselves of all the undivine qualities in order to attain Him. This will then purify the heart and advance the aspirant on the spiritual path. Yes, that is true, Adrian. But all this information can be obtained through technology in the comfort of your home. So now, it is not necessary to attend temples and ashrams. Don't be so sure, Rivash. Sri Gurudev says that there are three important things for man to be able to realize God. 
they are to get a human birth to have aspiration for god and most importantly to keep the company of saints we can obtain this aspiration and guidance by attending ashrams and taking advice and following the teachings of saints so what do you think is the best way to be able to achieve this whilst we are still in lockdown and cannot visit ashrams and temples i would suggest that you spend an hour in the morning doing sadhana and then commence your work day if you cannot keep the company of saints physically then you can read their literature also try to develop and keep a daily routine having a spiritual diary as a guide remember also that exercise and rest is important so you should take a break during the day to relax or go for a walk if you are required to use social media ensure that you place a strict timeline on how long you are going to spend on it to avoid getting addicted i think the idea of a spiritual diary is a great one keeping a time slot to these activities and adhering to them will result in strict discipline and lead to regularity and focus these are key elements on the spiritual path now we all know that the pandemic has brought pain sorrow and distress but many amongst the faithful have identified this period as an opportunity for spiritual growth what are your views well as we have mentioned before this period of uncertainty has brought with it many changes and surprisingly positive outcomes because many of us were forced to work from home traffic volumes and traveling in general were at a minimum compared to the usual peak hour traffic we used to experience also we were provided with invaluable time that we've never had before the lockdown definitely also provided me with time to explore my creative side i'm sure you are able to relate with this yes adrian you're absolutely correct the lockdown and the time at home gave me more time for introspection even though the world was in absolute turmoil i found peace in my prayer and in sri gurudev's teachings You know Ambrosia, now that you've mentioned it, I actually realized that we require very little to survive. You know that people talk about the simple pleasures in life? Well, I certainly became more appreciative of mother nature and even took on some gardening and DIY tasks at home. It is so good to hear such positive outcomes that were achieved from such a fearful and uncertain period of our lives. We definitely were forced to turn within and view this period as a blessing in disguise. We have been fortunate to at least participate in our online satsangs, allowing us to continue with our sadhana. and intensify our spiritual practices most definitely families were also spending more time with each other thus strengthening their relationship we at home even started cooking and experimenting with an assortment of recipes and dishes from baked bread cakes sweetmeats and the works This definitely came in very handy for Diwali. Well, Ambrosia, whilst you were baking bread, I was busy decluttering and spring cleaning my home. I didn't mind though, as I could not go to the gym during the lockdown, and the cleaning was therefore seen as my workout. During my spring cleaning, I realized that I have many items that I no longer use. and that these items could be of assistance to others i have therefore learned to hoard less and give more for me personally i actually appreciated the time at home as it was an opportunity for me to pause 
reconnect and re-energize. I also intensified my spiritual practices and prayer. Sri Gurudev has given us the best facilities in the world. Whilst we cannot physically attend satsangs and other programs at our ashrams and branches, we have our online satsangs and programs to help us regularly connect to Sri Gurudev through congregational worship. Satsang literally means association with the wise. Association, if it is not practical physically, could also be acquired through other methods such as reading of spiritual books or through keeping sublime thoughts. I did too and I found that I was able to check on my elderly relatives and neighbours because of all the time I had. It really made me feel good to know that I was able to help them with their grocery shopping and errands since they could not leave their homes whilst under lockdown. They were extremely grateful to me. You know, you mentioned gratitude, Rivash. I think it is so imperative, especially in times like these, that we show gratitude for the little things that we take for granted in our lives. A simple way of doing this would be by keeping a journal and just jotting down a few points a day, listing the things that we are grateful for each day. A gratitude journal of sorts. What do you think, Padmini? That is a brilliant idea, Hembrosia. We should all try to implement it and keep at it daily. Yes, agree. Let us look at the glass half full rather than half empty, focusing only on the positives. It's time now to round up. Does anyone have any last comments to make? Yes, I do. The following reading is on how Sri Gurudev counseled a devotee who had lost his job and had a huge debt to pay. He was helpless and penniless. Gurudev said to him, I quote, Dear immortal self, be bold, be cheerful. Though you are on the roll of unemployment, though you have been ousted from services, though you have nothing to eat, though you are clad in rags, though you starve along with your dozen family members, thy essential nature is Satchedananda, the outer cloak, this mortal physical sheath, is the illusory product of the Almighty. Smile, whistle, laugh, jump, dance in joy and ecstasy. Thou art not this perishable body. Come out of this cage of flesh. Thou art the immortal self." Unquote. Yes, that's what we need to remember. Sat, Chit, Ananda. We are the immortal self. As we conclude, we thank our young presenters today. They have brought the teachings of the Gita, not in the light of a spiritual philosophy, but as a bearing upon a practical crisis on hand in the application of ethics and spirituality to us, to cope especially with fear and depression. And as a take-home message, remember, Although we are faced with challenges, we should empower ourselves to face battles head on and call on God at all times. We are far more powerful than what we are going through and we do have the capacity to overcome everything that is going on in our life and around us. I leave you with the last sacred words of Sri Krishna from Chapter 18, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Here, the Lord declares the crowning note of the great Mahavakya. I quote, With the Lord in thy heart, take refuge with all thy being. By his grace, thou shalt attain supreme peace. Unquote. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hari Om, dear camp participants. 
Thank you for tuning into our Yoga Camp online lessons. Please note that satsang will commence at 11am and a WhatsApp link will be sent to you shortly. Om.